Hi, welcome to The Blame Game. I'm Maria from Pax8 Academy and joined by Nathan, also from Pax8 Academy. Um, let's get started. Nathan, you were asking some questions earlier. Yeah, I'm always asking questions. Uh, so <laughs> this is a scenario that I see a lot uh, that I'm curious on um, how it happens. So let's say it's Friday and you've got your whole week planned ahead, talking from projects, service department, and uh, you know, your whole week planned ahead, everything's looking 80, 90% booked in. And, you know, a couple of hours before the end of the day, you get a uh, note that um, sales has sold something and it's an onboarding and it needs to start next week. Why does that happen? Oh, well, <laughs> typically what I've seen, the reason that happens is one of two reasons. The first one, there's a there's a breakdown in communication. So it very rarely do we get a call on Friday morning saying, really keen on your uh, MSP services, can I buy it? And they're signed by lunchtime. And, yeah. Very rarely, but really, have we ever seen that happen? So mm. it, it, it's usually a longer sales cycle um, for, for something like, MSP uh, services. So it's it's generally going to be um, a breakdown in miscommunicate in, in communication between mm -hmm. the sales team and letting the service team know what's coming as part of yeah. their as part of their sales planning and forecasting. So if a salesperson's sitting there going, "No, I reckon I can close that deal this month," they're not telling anybody. Well, they're not telling the service team, I reckon I can close that deal this month. I've got a 50, 60, 80, 90% chance of closing that deal this month. Mm. That's That that needs to be assessed and reviewed. Um, you, you don't need to go into numbers and details and, and the, the sales forecasting from the sales team to the service team, but job forecasting, that'd be mm. great. Hey, we're looking to bring on, you know, I've got a 50% chance of getting a client who's got 20 seats and these this is the this is the deal I've offered them. Mm. That doesn't mean that you can build it into your plan, of course, for the coming week or the coming month as a service mm. team, but it means that you know, there in the back of your head that you've got a 50% chance that this is going to drop and you 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 might have to fit it in. Um mm -hmm. that would make a huge difference. It would make an enormous difference for sales, for, for service teams, um, mm. even, even just knowing that it might be coming. Um, the other reason that this might happen is that they offer a super good deal. If you sign by lunchtime Friday, we'll do a thing for you. Um, mm. There's a special deal, a uh, special deal on the table if you sign by lunchtime Friday. Um, the 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 issue there is not that the special deal has been offered or that there's a deadline or that because that's some uh, that's a tactic we often use in sales. If you do this by this time, and I mean we're coming up to mm. the end of the financial year in Australia, yeah. we are going to see a lot of those deals happening in the next two weeks. Mm. Um, that sense so, of urgency, yeah. Yeah, that sense of urgency, and that's typical for the end of every quarter. I mean, you know, that's the mm -hmm. same, and it's not just our industry. Because I mm. bought a car on the 24th of December, knowing mm. that. <laughs> People have got targets to meet, right? Yeah, that's right. Knowing yeah. that the, the car guy had, had a number of cars he had to sell. And so, you know, I got a really good deal. Um, the same, you know, everybody does it. And so that can often happen. And I wonder, perhaps, perhaps that needs to be communicated to the service team. It's coming up to end mm. quarter. So, by the way we're going to be doing a mad sales push for the next two weeks, July is going to look a bit hectic mm. because we will promise things and it will be things like, you know, I know you said that onboarding was super urgent for you. Um, we've got a backlog of people that we have to get onboarded, um, but we will put you to the front of the queue and push them aside and, and do this, that and the other if you sign by this time mm. um, How, how's that work if everyone if they're using that pitch for everything and everyone's front of the queue um it doesn't it doesn't work for mm. the client 
it doesn't work for the client. The client's the one that misses out. The, mm. the clients collectively are the ones that miss out. And ultimately, the reputation of the business. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because, and, 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 and of course, the service team. Because yeah. the delivery team, it gets like, well, I was told that it would be delivered this week. I would be told that I would be onboarded. I was told that I, my project would be X, Y, Z. It, you know, it, it makes the company look really bad. Not the best first incre- uh, impressions if you're onboarding them, right? You're already off no. to a rocky start. No, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And, you know, we've all worked with companies um, as providers who've made a bad first impression. It takes a lot to come back from that. Yeah. Yeah, especially if your main point of difference is we're not like the other people you were with and we're, you know, structured and, uh, you know, we put you first and, you know, usual kind of pitches that you get with, you know, the team of experts and we care about our clients and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And then the first weekend, nothing's delivered. You're in this weird transition phase where everything's chaotic and you can't get a hold of anyone. <laughs> yeah. Not, not the best first impression, obviously. So, yeah. So I have a question for you. If I mm-hmm. was selling services, uh, if I was selling MSP services and you're, deliver- you're managing the team delivering them, mm-hmm. um, and I say to you, okay, Nathan, next month I'm forecasting three deals with a 90% chance of closure. Mm-hmm. Here's, the, here's, the, here's the rough details of the deals, how many seats and, and what, we're, what, what I've, I've put in the, in the scope. Um, yeah. What do you think you might do differently within your team if you had that information? Yeah, well, it would be very uh, useful information to start with because typically your sales team is going to have some sort of pipeline, right, which will have the, you know, how, how sure we're going to win it, how much work it is, how many hours, things like that. And so sometimes I'm working with businesses to work on how we can visualise that and make it visible for project and delivery teams. Uh, it would be useful. Uh, I would say we could do, uh, you know, schedule in some block hours or, you know, pencil it in essentially of we're anticipating this. But from my perspective, there needs to be a cutoff when we say, you know, if they haven't res- responded by this time, we're not doing it this time. So if you're putting deadlines around stuff, don't be vague with, oh, if you sign this promptly, uh, we'll start on this date because I've worked in places where they do that and they sign the day before it was we see we could start and all of a sudden you're expected to go and rush and grab everyone and you know deliver it because it's what said in the um you know in the proposal uh so lead times i think is important there so a lot of places aren't scheduling things to start with uh and that's something that needs to be done to start with, specifically your project team uh, around scheduling so you can anticipate how much demand you're meeting or can meet. Uh, so let's say on an average, I can commit 28 hours a week to project work per engineer. And I've got you know the 12 hours in the week for reacting to things um, that come up last minute. We might say that now, communicate that with the client. You know, Once you've signed off, once you've paid, we've got prerequisites. Two, we can begin as a general rule of thumb two weeks after, or we're having that conversation with them up front and early anyway. Uh, if it gets to the two weeks out and we were 90% sure and it's not done, I don't want to be committing a whole bunch of people to sit around doing nothing. So we need to be looking at what we're going to be doing otherwise. Mm, mm, yeah, I mean, there's there's still a, a big chance that it, it doesn't happen at all or it um, or it gets delayed or fizzles out and they come back six months later. That's it. Yeah. So, so having some clear guidelines for the, for the clients, for the sales Mm. team to communicate to the clients. So if I can go to a client and say, this is how, this is how we work from the day you sign to the day we start onboarding. We have the following checklist of paperwork that we need to follow through to make sure that we're doing onboarding correctly. This takes up to 21 days, let's say, yeah. you know, sure. but we have a clear guideline. Um, and if we give them something along those lines, 
that that becomes part of the sales pitch. It can become part of the sales pitch if you can mm. clearly articulate how how we deal with clients, how we onboard our clients, and yeah. then you know what the process is. That might actually make the clients feel more secure and safe yeah. in coming on board with us. Because they would have gone through, I'm sure, those onboardings that are unstructured and chaotic of uh, we're just trying to get it done last minute. Um, sorry for all the downtime. Sorry, none of us know how to support you. Uh, we'll, we'll figure it out as we go, you know, two, three months down the line. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, so should, so what we're saying is that sales and service should come up with a strategy to together. Yeah. To deliver that, to, to figure out what onboarding looks like or what project delivery um, timelines, not the timelines of the project delivery, the, the, the timelines between the close of sale and the start of the project. Yeah. And it's not always going to be a general rule of thumb. We can always start two weeks after as well, because two weeks from now, we may be busy with an onboarding and a major project at the same time as well. And we can't can't just meet that demand. So use it as a rule of thumb, use it as guidance, but the main thing is use it as a way to communicate and get some visibility. Uh, so you've got a pipeline uh, that you're looking at and you've got you know, level of certainty or um, whatever it is that you have, you might have an understanding um, when you've done your qualification and designed the proposal of how uh, many uh, hours labor it's gonna take and things like that. Have that visible to the people that are you know, managing and meeting that demand and work so that they can see. And on the other side, if you're running projects, scheduling in the time so that sales can even have a cursory glance over what the commitment of the team is. So they can see, hey, we're really busy over the next two, three weeks. I can't tell anyone that we're starting for the next few weeks, but they can go to the project manager or the service manager or you know whoever's, whoever's the point of contact in that department and, and say, hey, look, I see we're quite busy for the next three weeks. I'm looking at you know, closing out this this deal, were we to get it signed and, you know, deposits, whatever our policy is, have some policies around that as well. Um, you know, 100% hardware up front, things like that. Were we to get all the things that we need, that you need, you've got a checklist, you've told me what the checklist is, we're talking about it, working through it, could we start in four weeks? And then they can go back to the client and say, hey, look, I've talked to projects, if you sign it, close it off, get everything yep. done, pay your deposit. Four weeks from now, we can start the project. Yep. So, I mean, we're, we're, we're circling back to communication between yeah, the teams. Yeah, communication. Yeah. <laughs> always and the answer is, um, okay, so that sounds like a really great, so we almost need, I'm thinking we need uh, in, our, in our leadership meetings perhaps, uh, mm -hmm. we need service to be, reporting what their availabilities are, mm -hmm. what their workload is, um, and and sales to be forecasting what their projections are for um, deals to close and what yep. sort of, not not a dollar size, but uh, what's involved in the delivery. Yeah. 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 And then, and then marry those two up and work out. And in some cases, you know, there, there will be, there will be clients who come to us and say, I urgently need to do the thing yeah. and I'm only going to sign with you if, you know, sometimes mm. it comes from the client, sometimes it doesn't come from the sales. Yeah. And it comes And the sales, salespeople, you know, we're people pleasers. We mm -hmm. just want to make every, we want everyone to say, we love you and everyone's yeah. happy and, you know, we want to say yes to everybody about everything, right? Mm. So a client comes, gives me a call and says, if you can do this on starting on Monday, I'm signing with you on the spot. It's like, yes, of course. <laughs> Hang on a minute. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we need to we need to work out a process for those as well. Yeah, 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 yeah um, absolutely. And there, there'll be really real reasons why that is the case. You know, they may have completely lost trust in their current provider. There might be, you know, massive security vulnerabilities or productivity, you know, risks to the business. And they just need to move over as quick as possible. So, um, you know, building in some free capacity, like I was saying, if you 
you know, plan on 28 hours of scheduled work a week as an example, um, should give you some capacity to deal with that. But we also want to still validate and discuss it before, you know, the, the first time oh, someone's hearing about it shouldn't be when it's signed off and it's already <laughs> been Here's promised. The deal. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. So let's let's have that communication up front and let people know and anticipate because there might be stuff that's non-urgent that we can push out. Uh, it's better to be able to do that, you know, the week before than it is the week after when you're in the mix of all the chaos. So what can we do to, you know, meet that demand? Because the other thing when we're talking around communicating with clients and stuff is that if the risk is that we're moving that work around to accommodate a new client, what's the detriment to our existing clients? And were it me, I'd be thinking about that as well as the person coming on board of, oh, well, if they're going to push out all the work and create problems for all their existing clients, when's that, when's that going to happen for me in the future when they're onboarding the next one? Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm. Um, so I guess my, um, my recommendation uh, to salespeople out there is buy a couple of pizzas, go have lunch with your service delivery team and have a chat with them. Ask them what you can do as a salesperson to make their lives mm. easier um, and get some feedback. And then sales teams and service teams build a, build a strategy, build a plan around forecasting your workload and mm. your de deals to marry up. Mm -hmm. Any further thoughts, Nathan? No, I agree. Uh, that visibility and communication is really the, the key thing and recurring theme throughout our conversations. Uh, if it was as easy as just go and communicate and that it'd solve all your problems, uh, that would be great. But there are at least some things we can do. So if you can uh, anticipate the demand, you can meet the demand better. So sharing that visibility between what your pipeline is and you know, the, the capacity and availability of the people who are going to be delivering it. I think it's a great starting point. Brilliant. Thank you.